Hello, this is Blue Star, Defender of Equestria, and this is gonna be just a weapons free video about uh, why I do not like the sirens and my personal reasons why I do not like rainbow rocks and things like this, because uh, I just need to say this already and just get this done and hopefully move on to other things that I'd rather do. <laughs> Oh dear, I must admit, there's just a lot of things that are, uh, that I personally don't like about the Sirens and Rainbow Rocks in general, which I honestly don't feel I should put into a review, and this is why in a way I'm having trouble thinking about what should I do for a review, because it's like, yeah, there are, there are some definitely objective things that I can find wrong with Rainbow Rocks, but a lot of the reasons I dislike it so much are very personal and subjective, which I think... It doesn't mean that they don't count, but if a, a true reviewer should always be objective and everything. So, I'm gonna go weapons free, weapons free in this video and just talk about stuff in general and do this in my quick and dirty afterthought format. So I don't know if I'm even gonna change my OC's expression or add any other images or anything like that, or maybe even not edit my audio too particularly well, because I just simply need to get this done already and just move on. Because as I said in my in my Rainbow Rocks cancelled video, it's like I simply do not agree with the Brody community on a lot of things in this case. In a way, I guess I never have, to be honest. My very first character analysis video was about Celestia and how I think the Brody community basically got it wrong. It's like they're interpreting Celestia like she's this evil, tyrannical leader, which in terms of the canon of the show is just simply wrong. That's just not who she is. It's just not. So yeah, I mean, okay, so let's get on to the sirens. Let's just get going with this. Uh, I mean, I've honestly been very confused by people's reactions because it's just like, it seems like they're taking their side and I've had people say, oh, we should feel bad for them because they've got no choice to do this and oh, we should just simply feel bad for them. It's like, my first reactions to this are, um, no. <laughs> They're doing all these horrible things to us, and they don't care. That was my point in a lot of my videos, is that they are evil, they don't care, and most importantly, they still don't care at the end of Rainbow Rocks. They're still, in a way, our enemies. I don't see why I should feel bad for people who decide to pick up a weapon and use it to hurt other people. And then all of a sudden, in all honesty, that's essentially what the sirens have done. They've basically gone and declared war on Canterlot High and tried to take it over forcibly. They're not just simply bullies or mean people. They're the enemy. They're invading our world and trying to take it over and everything like that. And unfortunately, in that situation, when people are shooting at you, the only appropriate thing to do is shoot back. And trying to be nice to the sirens and all those things is not going to work on them. Because they don't care. And besides, no one is going to negotiate with you when they think they have all the cards. And for the most part, they do. It reminds me of this scene from um, Star Wars The Clone Wars. And that where Obi-Wan Kenobi confronts Darth Maul. And basically, we've and over, long story short, is that we learned that Darth Maul actually, in a way, didn't have any choice. He was basically drafted to be this evil guy and everything. And Obi-Wan tries to do that. He tries to say, you know, it was, I, I understand this wasn't your fault. I feel kind of bad for you. And, and Darth Maul goes, you think you understand me? And then continues on, and then ignores him, and then continues on his angry monologue. And that's exactly what would happen with the sirens. They don't care. They don't care how they, how we think or feel. They're only here to gain power by hurting us. What can I say? I didn't like bullies when I was a kid, and I don't like them now. And honestly, I still feel this is of their own free will. I definitely know one decision that they are responsible for, and that's to go and invade Canterlot High. They are clearly responsible for that. And again. We know their motivations. We know the reasons why they're doing this. They told us themselves. We don't need to interpret this. We know what they want. They want to make everyone in this world adore them. That's just simply their goal. And it's like, why should I feel bad for people like this? I mean, it's sad that they decided to do that, but you know what? You decide to pick up a weapon and use it to hurt people. You become a target to be destroyed and nothing more. And honestly, that's how I feel. The problem is, I know that that's kind of, it's very harsh. But at the same time, in the real world, that's just the, the case. It's frustrating. But at the same time, 
we should obviously give people a chance and try to learn why they're doing this and try to persuade them to not go into that, but yeah, it's just it's just frustrating because, you know, once the bullets start flying, the only appropriate thing to do is, is to shoot back. That just seems to be the way things work, and I'm, I wish it were not the case, but it was, and it is, and everything, and it's just, uh <laughs> Reminds me of... This whole thing in Babylon 5 with Captain John Sheridan in the episode that I honestly can't remember the name of. <laughs> or anyway, long story short, is that he has to destroy a Centauri warship, basically because, well, they were trying to protect the ships of one of their enemies. Uh, but the thing was, they're in their space. They don't have the right, the Centauri don't have the right to come in and basically blow apart this ship. It's like, Captain Sheridan says, we have sovereign rights here. We're going to give a little bit of aid to the ship. Escort him out of our space and territory. After that, it's no business of ours. And the Centauri decide to come and send a ship there. And basically, they open fire on Babylon 5, the Narn Cruiser, and Babylon 5's fighters. And it all goes weapons free, weapons free. And the Centauri warship ends up getting destroyed. And obviously, Captain Sheridan has to answer to this because, you know, he's like the guy who says, You destroyed a Centauri warship. Captain Sheridan says, You're dang straight. They fired first. It may not have been politically convenient, but legally and morally, it was the right thing to do. And that's how I feel. It's like people are like saying, no, that was not the right thing to do. We should not fight the sirens because they're, oh, we should feel bad for them. It's like, no, that's, that's wrong. That's just wrong. It's like, I wish we could negotiate and work things out with everybody, but... We can't. We just can't. I mean, in the real world, we just can't. There's sadly people in the real world that we gotta go and fight. Uh, I think I will add, I'll end with this, that part of this with this. It's like, and then Sheridan has to go and apologize to the Centauri for blowing up their ship. And he's obviously very angry about it. It's like, yeah, Captain Sheridan, I, I feel your pain. I feel your pain. You were only doing your job and you were doing what you thought was best and everything. And... Oh dear, he didn't want to blow up a Satori warship, but... Uh. But anyway, it's, he's... In the mirror, he's uh, rehearsing kind of like the speech with himself or something like that. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to modify the speech slightly so it's a little bit more towards MOP in this particular situation. And not to mention there's one line that I kind of don't want to include because it's not really appropriate to. So anyway, I'm sorry. Ugh. I'm sorry that we had to defend ourselves against an unprovoked attack. I'm sorry that the Sirens decided to invade and take over a high school full of innocent civilians. And I'm sorry that it took as long as the Maid Six did to blast their powers to pieces. But you know what? It was the thought that counts. Sorry, that was kind of harsh, but that's honestly the way I feel. It just really is. It's like, just like with Celestia and Nightmare Mood, she did what she had to do. It was not the nice way to solve this situation, just the only way. And again, the main six did not come here to negotiate or work this out with the sirens. They're here to go take them down. So if you've got an issue with this, you might want to take it up with them too. <laughs> but anyway, getting away from that, because yeah, that's my first frustration. But I mean, yeah, I, I do feel in a way I generally have to, you know, back off and feel uh, be sorry for, you know, I've been hard on a lot of siren fans, I guess, in a way. I mean, I haven't been directly trying to be, you know, hurtful towards them, but if I have, I'm sorry about that. I mean, my anger is directed at the sirens, and in a way, not at the fans, because you know, some people like the sirens just because, you know, they like them as a villain. Okay, that's fine. I, I must admit, I was caught up in my first thing to not really see that, and that's that's perfectly fine. If you just think they're cool villains, that's fine with me. That's nothing wrong with that at all. It's like, I like some of the other villains too, but um, if a portal opened up and all of a sudden they were in front of me, I wouldn't side with them or feel like, oh, we should feel bad for them. I'd be like, I'd just go and try to take them down. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so, okay, that's fine. I mean, but again, another thing that annoys me a little bit about, you know, the whole thing of people liking the sirens is that, you know, they're interpreting them in ways that aren't necessarily the way that they're portrayed in the show. I mean, if they want to go and make them, you know, fun and quote-unquote nice and have these conversations with Sunset Shimmer and, you know, oh, we're all friends now, that's fine. But at the same time, that's not the way they're portrayed in the movie. That's probably not likely. It's possible, but not likely. I mean, it's like, partic- and it's also, if you want to say, well, this proves that they're, well, they're not so bad. We should feel bad for them. Well, that's definitely, I don't support that because that's called headcanon. 
it doesn't count in terms of the show. Hey, I hope it happens. I hope that the sirens will be redeemed and they'll re learn that, oh, that we were really arrogant jerks before. It's like, oh, no, look at all the terrible things we did or whatever. And you know what? Maybe we can actually be nice to people now and all those things. I hope they can be re redeemed and everything. But in all honesty, nothing in Rainbow Rocks suggests that. The, the Rainbow Rocks basically says that these are the enemy. These are people that we only have to go out and fight. These are the kind of characters that are not going to be redeemed. It's just not the way this is going to work this time, which is fine. I mean, I honestly feel the sirens are just going to go away. It's like we take away their powers and now we really don't really care about them. And I'm fine with that. I mean, if they do return, it's going to be in a meh sort of way. It's sort of definitely going to be in a very distrusting way. I mean, but for the record, if the sirens did come up to us and say, Oh, we're so sorry. Please forgive us. That okay, I'd be a little suspect at first, but I'd be willing to accept that. I would love to see characters be redeemed. I would love that. But MOP has clearly decided that, you know what, that's not always the case. And honestly, I support that because that's just simply not the way the real world works. I mean, yeah, there are times we can redeem people and persuade them to no longer be evil or anything like that. But often that's not the case. That's just simply not. I wish this weren't the case, but it is. So bummer. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, so if I've been really hard on some of the Siren fans, I'm sorry. I think at first I just simply didn't get it. I didn't understand because as characters, I really dislike the Sirens because they're just simply arrogant, hurtful boys and they're jerks and I really don't like the whole, no, you're the worst. No, you are. Yeah, it's very immature and very teenager-like and it's very frustrating and distasteful. I do not like it and I just... I just, I think it's, yeah, again, it's ironic that people complain, oh, this is such a chipper, she's too much like the high school bully slash big girl, but then they make three characters that are exactly those things and talk exactly that way, and then people love them. What gives? <laughs> Uh, okay, so yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't, I mean, I mean, that's the main, one of the big, big things I don't like about Rainbow Rocks, so and definitely the Sirens, is they're arrogant. It's just about all the characters are very arrogant and selfish and everything, and it's most distasteful. That's another reason why I don't like the Sirens, it's like, they're all arrogant, and like, ha ha ha, look how tough and big and scary and formidable we are. It's like, oh, ha ha ha, we have all these magic powers that no one else does, ha ha ha. Well, if I had all these magic powers and nobody else had them, I'd feel pretty arrogant and uh, full of myself too. Ah, dear oh dear. That's the why, the one reason why they're not the greater villain is because, yeah, they have all these powers, but once you take them away, they're, they're nothing. Rainbow Rocks basically said so. We don't care anymore. Now that they have no magic, we don't care anymore. Just go away. We don't care. <laughs> And Sunset Shimmer, at the very least, proved that, you know what, she's capable of being a villain in this world without needing magic, which is why I think she was the greater villain, because the Sirens don't prove that. Is it possible? Sure. Uh, but they don't prove that in the movie, and honestly, they do have a lot of deception and manipulation abilities, and I probably should give them a little bit more credit than I have, but at the same time, it's like, it's difficult to get away from the fact that without their magic, they are, they're not villains, that we just don't care about them. We only care about them when basically they have this power that no one else does, and it's just, ugh. <laughs> but yeah, I really dislike all the characters' arrogant behavior, especially the main sixes. It's just disappointing to see all our characters basically fighting and arguing about all these things while all this bad stuff's going on. It's like, I, I don't like any of the characters here. It's like, ugh. It's like, hello, you've got bigger problems here. It's like, this isn't about you. This is about the group. And there's much larger, bigger things going on. And again, this is why this also frustrates me and I don't like it because this reminds me too much of the real world. That basically we're sitting around arguing with ourselves over our own petty interests while... There are much larger, much bigger things going on. Oh, and in the mean, and also, uh, the bad guys are over there and they're laughing at us. It's like, this bites. I've had enough of it. I spend most of Rainbow Rocks thinking, can I please just take down the sirens already? Why do we have to keep doing this? Why do we have to just simply sit here and let them hurt us? Can we just go over and punch them in the head or something? <laughs> 
interestingly, I thought, oh, that would work, but uh, not entirely. That, yeah, punching the sirens in the head might knock them out, and you might be able to take the, their magic jewels off of them, uh, which, honestly, I think you could do. But that doesn't solve the bigger problem of that all the other students are still under their spell, so we have to break them out of that spell, too. So, yeah, that, that sort of prevents you from just simply going up and punching them in the head, which is the other reason why I think they're the... They're not the greater villain because, yeah, they're one and only power can be defeated by basically not listening to them by doing something like putting on a pair of headphones. And you could uh, once you do that, you they have no power over you and you can just walk up to them and punch them clean in the head and they're done. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, everyone's arrogant behavior is just very disappointing to me. The only character I think who isn't in this mode, I think, is Sunset Shimmer. It's like, yeah, it's just like. She says it herself. It's like, you don't have time for any of this. You have to go and basically register uh, in like 15 minutes. It's like, come on already. Get with it. <laughs> and just Twilight was very disappointing. It's like she's supposed to be the, the, the princess of friendship. And she completely, utterly fails here. It's like, Twilight, you didn't notice that all this tension was going on? Were you asleep or something? What gives? I mean, I understand that this is a difficult, painful situation for her. I mean, I understand the situation all too well. In a way, I would probably feel the way she is. It's like, she just wants... If you notice in the scene where they're locked in the the room under the trap door, it's like Twilight slowly backing away. She doesn't want to deal with this because in a way, she doesn't know how. Because I don't... Yeah, I don't think they've in a way ever been in this kind of situation before where these characters are all fighting the way that they are and there's no way for her to just fix this i don't think she knows how to fix it and that's kind of disappointing but i understand that that's the whole point of this episode is that you know what even the princess of friendship can outright fail and in a way that's a good lesson to teach because there's definitely been a lot of these shows where you know characters never fail they always win they always succeed and we know that's not the way the world works you're gonna fall flat on your face from time to time everyone does it you know it's just the way it is and i have to say that these shows in a way hurt me because yeah i didn't i think i needed to learn this lesson a little bit too that's all i'm gonna say is that yeah that you know what not only is this gonna happen but that it's okay that it happens too is sort of the lesson here but at the same time i still didn't really enjoy this lesson not the way it was portrayed i think the problem for me is it's simply going on for too long that it's just it's just too long. We spend most of this movie basically watching the sirens hurting people and seeing our heroes being unable to do anything about it. And they practically blunder into the siren sights, so to speak. And they're also, they were on a course for self-destruction even before the sirens got here. All the sirens did was basically turn up the stress levels and open up these cracks that existed within the main six to begin with and almost busted them all apart by just just simply accelerating this process that the main six were already on and it was kind of disappointing which is why in a way i don't want to give them credit for oh they split the main six up i mean they sort of give them they, they sort of deserve credit for that but again the main six were already going down this road it's sort of like they walked up to the edge of the cliff and all the sirens did was push them off <laughs> Okay, but I do have to say I should probably give the Sirens a little bit more credit than they that I've been giving them. But at the same time, it's difficult to get away from the fact that their primary driving force, the thing that enables them to be villains, is their power. And in a world without magic at all, that just feels like cheating. And I've probably said that enough, so I'm going to move on from that. But yeah, I mean, I generally don't like the overall tone of this movie. It's literally the inverse of Equestria Girls. Equestria Girls was about bringing people together and in a way breaking us up. Well, as Rainbow Rocks is about starting off in that place and then tearing us down and watching everything fall apart and going downhill and seeing our heroes fail and everyone getting hurt. And I don't like this because honestly, again, this reminds me of the way things are. This is in a way our world in a, <laughs> almost directly is that things are just getting worse every day and just feels like there's nothing we can do about it. And it just doesn't make me feel good and in all honesty i'm not watching a show for six-year-old girls to be depressed if i want to be depressed i'll go watch a cable news channel or i'll watch just about any other show on television and honestly i've had enough of this nonsense 
Uh, I'm not saying that bad stuff can't happen in the show because it'll be difficult to have a show without bad stuff have it happening. But I think in this case, the answer is it simply went on for too long. The pacing was all wrong in this movie. You know, it, in the last 10 minutes, everything got resolved in that last 10 minutes. It was just too little, too late. I loved that fight. It was awesome. It was cool. But it was just too little, too late. I think they needed to show at least a little bit that, you know, our heroes, they're going to be able to handle this somehow or something or give me something other than the main six are failing. And at this last moment, we're going to flip everything around and all of a sudden, oh my gosh, now we're back and now we're going to go take down the bad guys. Yeah, it's just too little, too late. That it just, I don't know. I don't honestly know how to fix that or deal with that. But yeah, that's just simply the way I feel. If, if this were like a regular episode and this went on for, you know, a little bit, it wouldn't be such a big deal. But it just, it's just, it just feels like every five, ten minutes we're getting like punched in the chest with something else. It's just like, ah. And then it makes me want to go and punch the sirens in the chest. So you think you're so hot, eh? You, I'll take you down. I don't need a weapon to destroy you. <laughs> That's how I feel for most of this movie, which is why I don't really like it all that much. The pacing is just all wrong. It, they needed to do more, or they needed to cut a lot of this movie out. And I still stand by this, is that you can cut most of this movie, because a lot of it is unnecessary. It's like, oh, we need to stall so Twilight can finish the counterspell. Nah, we don't need to do that, because Twilight can't write the counterspell in complete failure. Oh. Okay. Oh, we need to win the Battle of the Bands and all that stuff too. Oh, no, we don't either because A, they get trapped in the trap door room or whatever, and B, they don't care anyway and they go and decide to play on the side of a hill. So we didn't need to do that either. So all that stuff was irrelevant. The songs, for the most part, are good from a technical objective standpoint. But a lot of the bit of way don't move the story forward. They just don't. They sort of do and they sort of don't. From a technical standpoint, the songs are actually okay. I mean, they're pretty good. But my problem is with the content. Like the first Siren song, let's face it. This song is basically designed to convince people that it's okay to, you know, get what you want by hurting other people and everything. You get to split people apart and all those things. And it's undoing everything that Twilight and the Main Six were able to do in one song. No! <laughs> I don't like that. I mean, honestly, in a way, you could argue, well, Twilight, in a way, does the same thing. She just sings a song and, you know, oh, everyone's friends now. Yay! I'm a bit not entirely convincing, but at the same time, I like that. But the driver for why this succeeds is not magic. It's because, you know what, I think... They just needed a spark. They needed someone to follow and, you know, inspire them that, you know what, maybe we can be friends after all. That'd be great. <laughs> we don't like such a shimmer anyway. Let's go follow Twilight. <laughs> I think probably is the short answer as to why that worked. I mean, again, it's not entirely uh, driven by magic, what the sirens are doing. You know, you listen to the lyrics, it's actually kind of persuasive, but that's why I don't like it, because it is being persuasive. It's trying to get, it's, it's actually interesting to think about that they're using all the arguments that a lot of people use to justify basically being hurtful. Oh, what's wrong with a little competition? You know, it doesn't matter who you hurt when, you know, you're just proving that you're the best and everything. Well, I'll tell you what's wrong with a little competition. But first, I have a question to ask. What was the purpose of the musical showcase? Time's up! The answer is, it was a charity event to raise money for all the after-school programs. But by making it into this competition, it's no longer about that. It's about what everybody else wants. Nobody remembers that this was about charity. It's the, the reason for this was completely lost. It just simply becomes a selfish free-for-all, and that was disappointing in itself. And obviously, hurting other people to get what you want, to me, is almost the definition of evil. It, you know, it does matter who you hurt. So this song immediately goes into the dislike category for simply that reason. <sighs> I mean, there's a lot of popular music on the radio today that it sounds awesome, it sounds cool, but if you stop and listen to the lyrics, oh, it's evil. Click.
<laughs> and honestly, I don't believe in listening to songs like that. You can't just, you know, flip off the lyrics and pretend that what they're saying is okay. As Babylon 5 once said, it's like the problem with a big lie is that if you repeat it for long enough, you might actually start to believe it. And even subconsciously, I feel that if you listen to songs like that enough, you might actually start to believe the things they're saying. I mean, MOP is not deliberately trying to convince people to go, you know, be divisive this way, but it's it's impossible to ignore that that's not what the song is doing. It's trying, it's directly trying to convince people to be divisive and everything that way, and that's why I can't support that song. It goes immediately into the dislike category. It goes into almost in a way the click category. It's like, sorry, no, I can't listen to this song. The interesting thing is that proves the thing with the sirens as well, is that you can't listen to them. You can't give them the benefit of the doubt, because once you do, they've got you. You're, you're under their spell, and you have to do what they tell you to do. So the sirens are attempting to seduce us. And when someone's trying to seduce you, the only appropriate response is to just say no. You can't give in, because once you start giving in, you know, they're going to find that little crack and then work their way in. And then they've got you. But having said all that, yeah, I need to maybe not take that so seriously, but that's personally how I feel on that one. The first time I saw the Battle of the Bad Short, it's like, it didn't take me long to realize who and what these characters are and why they're the enemy. And more importantly, why they're my enemy. Because I'm Defender of Equestria! It'd be my job to go take them down. <laughs> But yeah, anyway, the sirens are basically the enemies of, they're the, op they're the enemy, they really are. They're the opposite of everything that Equestria stands for. Equestria stands for love, community, friendship, people coming together to uh, solve problems, and, and honestly, from time to time, tackle really crazy, super scary villains. <laughs> the sirens are about selfishness, arrogance, hurting others to get what you want. It doesn't matter who you hurt. This is absolutely what they stand for this is everything that they're about you know and it's these are literally the enemies of equestria it's just that simple these are the things that i would want to go out and defeat so that's the other reason why i don't like them it's like it's, and again as i've said they're the anti-main six they're practically the evil versions of some of the characters definitely adagio is twilight sonata probably is pinkie pie and um Area Blaze, probably Rainbow Dash. They're literally the evil opposite selves that, you know, Blue Star would have to, would go and be sent off to go fight if he had to and everything. But, you know, I, again, I can understand why people could take, would want to take these characters because, you know, what it is, you know, some people like that whole, you know, you know, arrogant teenage, like, what do you know about Good Fruit Punch? Probably no more than you. Some people like that. It could take that and turn it into something fun or interesting or cool. And that's fine. That's okay. But, Again, that's the other big thing with this movie is that, you know what, we're trying to pretend that it's a high school drama, but all this stuff with the magic and frankly that the sirens are basically invading and taking over basically destroys that. I mean, like with Sunset Shimmer uh, standing on stage and everyone saying, oh, the real Sunset Shimmer, she's back. Uh, in that moment, it's like they're trying to pretend that she's just a bully because you know what? If they, if the student body really thought that, they should go like call the cops or something because uh, Sunset Shimmer's evil again and she's gonna take over the school. We better go deal with that. <laughs> you know, there's just a lot about this movie that I don't like, and again, it's the arrogant behavior of most of the characters I don't like, and then how we flat fail. It's just so disappointing to see our characters fail this way, and uh. And this is obviously reflected in a lot of the songs. A lot of the songs are about, well, let's face it, a character singing, Oh, look how awesome I am! Or, You're under my power! <laughs> it's like, I don't think so. <laughs> and all that, you know, it's like, yeah, I mean, even Rainbow Dash's song, I have to say, I don't really like too much, because even, even though this song really fits Rainbow Dash very, very well, this is the side of Rainbow Dash I don't like. Her arrogant, I'm the most awesomest pony slash person in the universe. I don't really like that. There's a very fine line between confidence and arrogance and definitely season one and two Rainbow Dash definitely crosses that line into basically arrogance. And she's, I just don't like that side of her. I think this song would be okay if, if the other main six weren't basically forced to sing it. As a solo act, this would be fine, because this song definitely fits Rainbow Dash very well, but yeah, I mean, it's like, oh, Rainbow, why are you doing this to your friends? And more importantly, why are your friends going along with this? It's like, it's just like, this is, this song is not about this group, it's all about you, Rainbow Dash, I, I don't like that. Uh, but again, the song itself is actually okay. 
oh no it's like yeah the trixie song it's like oh I, I must admit, i've never been a fan of trixie because again she's a very arrogant oh i'm so special character i mean in equestria she kind of is but here she's even she's not just about every person here can sing and or play a musical instrument so it's like i don't know what she's going on about it's like you're even less special here than you are in equestria everyone else could do sort of what you're doing i do have to say though that she did pretty well i I think she probably would win second place but it just feels like no Trixie you're you're not this all-powerful person I you're just shut up go away <laughs> yeah it's like that's just unfortunately that's the reason I dislike most of these songs and I think honestly Rainbow Rocks is mostly about these songs so if you don't like the songs you're not gonna generally enjoy this movie and yeah, someone in the audience when I saw this live in the theater is like, ANOTHER SIREN SONG! <laughs> it's like, okay, we get it, we get it, you're arrogant jerks and you're full of yourselves, enough already! Can we please cut to the part where we get to take them down? <laughs> That's unfortunately what I'm thinking and feeling, you know, at that point and everything. It's just like, oh, come on, enough already! <laughs> Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. I just, oh, man, I just, I just don't like the overall tone and feel of most of the songs, Rainbow Rocks in general. I just don't like it. There was a lot of necessary but still really annoying exposition that I just simply didn't like or enjoy. I mean, I did enjoy some of it, but a lot of, I didn't like, I like the way they dealt with the exposition in the in Equestria Girls, where it's like, they, they made it into something funny and interesting, but here it's like, I gotta stop the story, explain this to you, and nah, that's the bad kind of exposition. That's the kind of exposition that breaks movies and stories and stuff, and uh, it was disappointing to see so much of it here. And yeah, it's just, oh, they just needed to get it in gear a lot more, and it's like... Twilight, I'm disappointed in you. It's like, you. she should have gotten in gear a lot sooner than she did. And it just feels like Twilight doesn't know what she's doing here. It's, and it's like, and everyone was just so hurtful. It's like, oh, I, I don't like the new Flash Century. It's like, I wanted to defend you, Flash Century. I thought you were cool, but I know you've got a valid point here. But ouch, that was hurtful, Flash Century. Ouch. <laughs> It's like, how dare you talk that way to a princess? I should have you court-martialed for that. Actually, probably Flash Century probably technically outranks me, so grr. <laughs> but anyway, enough of that, enough of that. So yeah, I mean, I think in a way I might have said everything I wanted to say, and I think in a way it was better for me to do my quote-unquote review slash feelings of this movie this way, because my biggest problem is is that I don't want to do these things this way and put all this time and effort into making these videos if no one's going to agree with me or if I'm just going to cause trouble, if it's just going to get ugly. I don't make these videos so that I can quote unquote do open battle with people and argue these things. I'm not saying I'm not willing to debate some things, but in this case, I simply disagree with Pretty much everyone. I'm, I'm on my own and there's no one with me. I don't want to die, I tell you. <laughs> That's sort of how I feel. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it, it just feels like this isn't a battle we're fighting anyway. So I think this is, in a way, the best way for me to have done this. Even though it was really crazy long, it's kind of lazy and I feel kind of bad about that but you know what there's only so many hours of the day I'd rather just get this done over with say everything I want to say and just move on and everything because I definitely would rather move on to other things so probably gonna do just one more uh, focus on video about the ending of Rainbow Rocks and that'll probably be it for a while yeah so I think I am not going to attempt to do an actual review of Rainbow Rocks because I think I've, in a way, said everything I wanted to say, even though it was kind of towards the end and it was really long. It's like, you know what? I'm not interested in, quote-unquote, beating the major players or the big reviewers at their own game. I just simply want to say what I wanted to say, say how I think it feel, and basically move on. And I think I'm going to do exactly that. So I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe at the very least understand the way I feel. And if I've been too hard on people, I'm sorry about that because that's not what I want to do. But it's just this has been a frustrating and difficult experience. So thank you for watching this video. And as always, thank you for commenting, liking, and subscribing. 
So, until next time, this is Blue Star. Stay strong and pony on. Blue Star out.